and to see if he ever listens to my sermons or whether he just keeps doing what he's doing. Let's watch it here. And guess what? He keeps doing what he's doing. Today, I'm gonna to take a look at some golf swings. We told people, hey, email us a quick little video of your swing, and we'll see if we can help you. Uh, first up is Dalton. And I always like to start by saying something really positive about every golfer. So Dalton, nice hat. <laughs> so here we go. Um, I've, I've watched this three or four times and uh, it, it's very typical of a lot of mistakes in a golf swing. If you'll notice, Dalton, I want you to watch your when you start your golf swing. You're going straight up with your hands. And what I try to teach people is your shoulders and your arms make a triangle. And that should be the start of your golf swing for you. What that does is that starts your rotation. Um, and again, I go back to the basics of, of athletic fundamentals. You have to be able to rotate and transition your weight back and forth, even though you're stationary. And because of the way you start by simply picking the club up, almost going straight up with your hands, there's not a lot of transition going on back. And from there, as I tap this and watch it, you prove that to be true, because what you do is you throw the club out over the top because you've made no rotation because now you've, you've, you've brought the golf club back here, you're not rotating, so to bring it back down, you have to throw it out away from you because you're not transitioning to clear. And to highlight that, is all we have to do is take a look at your finish. You'll notice how you're not finishing forward. You're finishing on your right side and your weight has never transitioned. So step number one for you is try to get yourself that first motion, that first six, eight inches away from the golf ball, whether it's your seven iron or your driver, try to do it with that triangle. And if you notice as I rotate my shoulders, my hips want to transition with me. But if I just take off with my hands, nothing wants to move. So that's step one from there. Try to emphasize getting your finish. In other words, finish on your left side. Those two work together. And if you can put those two in play, you're going to eliminate at least three-fourths of the mistakes you make in your swing. And what that'll do for us, that'll save me tons of time going through that list of mistakes you're making. So these two things right here is gonna fix a lot for you and focus on it. And the psychological side of that is when you're working on this, when you hit a bad shot, don't think, boy, what did I do wrong? I want you to step back and think, did I do what I was supposed to do every time you swing? So the great thing about this instruction is you can check yourself. Um, you can get up to your golf bag. By the way, nice golf bag, I'll tell you that. What you can do is get six to eight inches away from your golf, the bottom of your golf bag with your driver and tap it. Tap it with your driver by rotating your shoulders, not by just doing it with your hands. Rotate your shoulders so that's your starting drill. Your finish drill is every time you hit a golf ball, stop and look and see if you finished on your left side. That's the most I can give you in this video, but I can tell you, I've taught that thousands and thousands and thousands of times, and it's made golf a lot better for a lot of people. So, good luck, Dalton. Steven, thanks for the video. I'm taking a look at your golf swing. Um, great move. Um, really, really like the athletic motion. Um, the, the one thing I see from this angle, it's difficult to tell um, as, as opposed to a, a, a face on view. Um, it looks like the ball might have gone right, right to left a little bit, but um, don't see a lot of mistakes happening in your golf swing from this angle. But I, one thing I, it looks to me like, and this is something I preach, so I watch for it. It looks to me like you have a lot of grip and forearm tension in your swing. So there's a lot of pressure that needs to be relaxed. And what kind of confirms that to me is when I see a lot of grip pressure and that tenseness in the forearms, I, I tend to see the golf club being picked up. 
and that's what I'm seeing in your golf swing. As I watch it here again, just real quick, wow, the golf club comes up in a hurry. That tells me you have a lot of pressure here and it's not allowing you to just gradually extend back. What's happening is that pressure, I want to pull it up real quick or from your side, left side. So I would start by, um, and the test I give everyone, take hold of your golf club, get your normal grip and then squeeze it. Squeeze it tight and feel that tension go into your forearms. Now try to get rid of all that tension. So you relax your fingers as that tension's gone, that's how you want to start your swing. That creates more freedom of motion and it creates a more natural path for, for your golf club instead of something you're creating with that tension. So um, that's what I encourage you because otherwise you've got a great, great athletic move at the golf ball and that's something fantastic that you know we don't have to work on. But that's, that would be a starting point for you. Give it a shot. Hope it helps. Let me know. Thanks. Good luck. Okay, we've got Chipper and I can tell that's at Spessard Holland Golf Course in Melbourne Beach, Florida. Chipper, um, Chipper, in fact, I know Chipper and he works there. I have a video of Chipper and we're gonna take a quick look. And this is a front on view, which makes it really easy for me. Good extension, very athletic. And then Chipper kind of makes a huge mistake coming back at the golf ball. And I can tell by, if I watch the tree line behind him, his, his head motion goes from here to when he starts at the golf ball, he dips. It looks like eight to 10 inches, which makes it very difficult to consistently get the club face back to where he wants to. It's like, I don't mind the movement, again, another lefty, away from the ball here with your head, but it's when your head goes from here down to here, that makes it a little challenging. So my suggestion is for Chipper is, let's just try to maintain the position of our head as far as the level it's on. Um, I'm not concerned about, again, we're allowed to move back, that's fine, I don't have a problem with that because you do a good job of staying behind it at impact, you're not drifting out in front, which would be the mistake, but your mistake is your head motion is up and down. Uh, we don't want that up and down motion, it, it, especially that exaggerated. A little bit's not bad, but that's extremely exaggerated and my guess is you're probably going to be inconsistent with, it looks like you're hitting a three wood off the tee there. Um, I'm guessing you're gonna be inconsistent with the flight pattern of your, of your golf shots. So let's try to work on that. Let's maintain that, that head position at the same level throughout the golf swing. One of the ways I've always done that is I've stood in front of someone with a golf club and I put the grip on top of their head and when they disappear from it, they feel it when they come back up and tap it, and then they understand what's going on. But I think if you watch this video, pay attention to that, you're gonna see it in a hurry, and I think that's gonna help you a lot, actually, um, in consistency, because you, you have a very, very good golf swing there, but that's something to work on to help improve it. So, good luck, Chipper. Hope it helps you. Okay, I've got a video from Chris and his golf swing, so we're going to take a quick look. Um, Chris, don't know how long you've been playing. Um, hope you're enjoying the game. Um, I, my initial evaluation is when I take a look at your golf swing, I quickly went over to Amazon to see if they had any uh, bowling ball sales, but now nah, just just having some fun with you. Actually, it's you have a pretty good. Uh, you have what is very hard, you have what's very hard to teach, and that is you have a really good rotation. So you have a foundation there that's actually pretty solid. Um, I'm not sure you're, you're feeling that confident about it, but um, actually you have a really good rotation. It's very athletic. Um, two issues that I'm gonna to talk to you about. Um, one is tempo, and the other one is balance. You're very, very quick in pulling the trigger. Um, it looks like you're firing that right hand out of the gate really quick and you're going so fast it's really hard for you to catch up. So what I would encourage you to do is relax in your grip. 
Um, I'm not, I'm, I don't really care how you hold the golf club. I'm more concerned with the tension you have in your grip. So the more you relax your grip, the easier it is to have a, a more controllable tempo. The more pressure you put in, the more tendency it is to get faster than what you can swing. So let's start right there. Let's, let's relax the grip and that's gonna relax your forearms, and you're going to see if you do that in some practice swings, it's really hard to be fast. You come to your, what happens is when I teach people this, they find their tempo, and that's what we're all looking for. Everyone is different. We all have different tempos, uh, we have different attitudes, so it's finding yours. Let's start by, especially I see in a very strong right hand, let's relax the grip, and that will ease our tempo a little bit. From there, which plays into that as well, is the loss of balance in your swing. And that just tells me you're swinging so quick with your hands and arms, you're not controlling it. I'm assuming you can throw a ball, a baseball or a football without falling over when you're done. You should be doing the same thing when you swing a golf club. You should have enough balance in what you're doing. You should be able to control it. So let's, let's back it down. Let's relax a little bit and let's find a tempo that fits us, that we can swing in balance. When I finish my swing, I should be under control and I shouldn't be going anywhere. I should be stationary in total control of my weight. So that's what we're gonna to try to create here by getting you to relax a little bit, finding a smoother tempo, because in, in your athletic move, it's in there, it's just a little out of control. So that's my recommendation is backing it down a little bit, relaxing and not thinking so much about the golf ball and how far I'm going to hit it or even where I'm going to hit it. Step back and start putting some of that thought into your swing as far as tempo, balance and finishing the swing. And I think that's gonna go a long way for you. But you know, yeah, tease you a little bit, but I think there's a really good core there for you to work on, uh, but you're not letting it happen. A lot of times the challenge with golf is we try to do more than we have to do. We get more creative than we have to do. So let's step back and relax and let's just make a smooth transition. And when I tell people to do that, to back down to get a tempo and finish, they always ask, well, when can I hit it harder? And I'll tell you, you never have to worry about that. As your transition gets better, and your tempo and you get smoother, what's going to happen? As you get better at that, that transition gets faster. You never have to say, okay, I'm gonna swing faster today. Because as you get better at it, your club head speed picks up because you get better at doing it. Not because you're thinking I'm gonna hit it harder. So, and that thinking I'm gonna hit it harder, that always translates typically for most of us into our hands and losing our balance. So that's gonna be my advice for you and uh, get out and try it and good luck. Okay, we've got Caleb's video now. This should be fun as I've seen this swing a few times and we're gonna take a look and to see if he ever listens to my sermons or whether he just keeps doing what he's doing. Let's watch it here. And guess what? He keeps doing what he's doing. So uh, my first question would be, did you ever work on the railroad? It looks like you've been pounding railroad spikes. Um, it's very simple here. It's probably the most difficult thing to get out of a golf swing. And that is there's great rotation. Very athletic move, great posture, good setup, good balance, but it's just the firing of the hands from the top of the golf swing. That's the most difficult thing to get rid of in a golf swing is because it gets between your ears and what happens is our instincts is if I put a club in your hand and there's a ball there, what are you gonna hit the ball with? You're gonna throw that club at the ball with your hands and while we do throw our hands at the ball with the club, it has to be in the right sequence. And that's what we make messed up. When we swing back to the top, we can't lead from the top. Because if I turn, and especially if, if you have a poor rotation, you can probably get away with it. But if you're doing something right, and you're getting a good rotation, now if I want to swing down from the top, everything's in the way. So what do I have to do? I have to throw it out here and come across the golf ball. 
So it's that rotation, once I get here, it's that old step drill. The left foot, if you're right-handed, step forward and then start. And the difficulty is this is nothing but a timing issue. And it's learning, I have to start my transition toward the ball with my lower body before I get to the top of my backswing. And everyone, what they do is they swing to the top. Now I want to transition. And you'll notice, go out and do it. Everyone can go out and do this. Go out and swing to the back of the top of your backswing. And you're going to notice there's an automatic recoil that happens because you've extended yourself and there's an automatic recoil. Well, if you haven't transitioned before that automatic recoil, it's too late, it's over. So before you get to your backswing, everyone teaches, well, at the top of your backswing, transition that lower body and rotate. Guess what, it's too late. What you have to do is before you peak, you've had to start to rotate. And what that does, that clears this path so you can come inside and get back square to the golf ball. So that's what Caleb needs to work on. I know he's worked on it. And it's just, a, it's just something that you have to get between your ears and it's a timing issue. And if you stay focused on it, you will get it. So it's understanding what's going wrong and how do I fix it. It's not dealing with where did the golf ball go and what went wrong. Let's get rid of that and let's deal with, okay, I know what I'm supposed to do and let me work on that. And the easiest way to work on it is let's slow down just a little bit and let's get it down before we want to speed up. So instead of going 100 miles an hour, let's get it down to 75 and let's work on that motion. Again, transition before the peak of the backswing. So that's what I've got for Caleb today. I hope he actually goes out and works on it, and let's see how it works this time. And I want to thank everyone for the videos. I hope I've helped you with some quick golf tips for you. I know golf tips a lot of times um, don't work out because there's more details, but from what, I, what I've seen today and what I've worked on, I've tried to give you a basic element that should be a part of your foundation rather than just a quick gimmick tip. So that's how I work with golf instruction. So for all of you, thanks for sending your videos in and good luck and let us know how you did. Thanks.